Welcome back to Masters of Light, the series where we sit down with the work of some of the most prolific photographers of all time and we try to figure out what made them so great. Today's episode is all about Gordon Parks. Of all of the American photographers, I would argue that none have managed to be as prolific or as influential as Gordon Parks. He's created some of the most striking images of the 20th century and his work lives on long after his passing. He was an incredibly talented artist. He wrote and directed films for cinema. He was a musician, a poet and a journalist. But today I'm going to be taking a look at his incredible catalogue of photographic work. Gordon Parks grew up in a broken America, one that was a victim of the suppression and segregation of African American people. I grew up in Southern Africa and in history we learned about the atrocities of the apartheid regime. We were shown images, videos and news articles that outlined the terrible things that happened to the people of South Africa and I would argue that the America Gordon Parks grew up in wasn't too dissimilar from the apartheid times in South Africa. With this backdrop of suffering, Gordon took up the responsibility to create art that gave a voice to the voiceless people in America at the time. From a very young age, Gordon realized that policies in government took too long to bring about change. He realized that violence and warfare shed too much blood. In fact, the only way that you could change the society that you lived in was by changing the minds of the individual. He doesn't humanize his subjects in his photographs. I would argue that he humanizes the observer of his photographs. He asks you with every single image to consider the individuals in the frame and their surroundings before you pass a judgment. One of the things that I admire most about Gordon Parks was his insane ability to familiarize himself with his subjects long before he even photographed them. His famous article for Life magazine covered a gang member in New York City called Red Jackson. And before he even took a single photograph of Red, he spent an entire week driving through the streets of New York City just interviewing him and getting to know him. He actively put himself outside of his comfort zone, taking images and showing people a world that they would have never seen before at the time. Gordon Parks often deliberately posed and gave his subjects props before he photographed them. This made all of his work quite deliberate in its meaning and tones before he even captured the image. As a result, I would say that there's a deeper layer of meaning and intent behind all of Gordon's work, which stands in contrast to somebody who serendipitously captured a moment on the streets. Gordon Parks was also a social butterfly and through his rising success as a photographer and a filmmaker he was able to become friends with some of the most powerful African-American figures of the time. People like Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali.
Through these relationships, Gordon was able to humanize these incredibly powerful figures. And he showed the world a different side to these people, one that few other photographers could. Gordon's work has proved to truly be timeless. People like Kendrick Lamar and Volandes, who openly reference and admire Gordon Parks as a photographer, expand and extend the lifespan of his work. These images and references are a harsh reminder that America is still broken, even in 2022. Gordon Parks created some of the most visually stunning work of any photographer in the 20th century. He was able to humanize the people behind the suffering of segregation and also give the world a new perspective of America in the 20th century. He is, without a doubt, one of my favorite photographers of all time. And if you have never spent any time with his body of work, I highly encourage you to do so. You're gonna to learn tons about photography, but I would say you're gonna learn even more about what it means to be a human being. Thank you so much for watching this video, but most of all, thank you, Gordon Parks. Mm -hmm.